my lovely people. How are you today? My name is Dre. I'm with Platinum Black Services. And today I just wanted to go over a quick tip on naming your corporation the right way. So just in case you are in this part of your journey and starting a business, I just want to help you kind of go through this little hump because if you do not name your corporation the, the right way, you can face the state rejecting your articles of incorporation and then you'll have to start that process all over again. So I want to save you some time in doing this step the right way. And I have a client right now who is starting a business now. They don't want to go back to work. I don't blame them. We've had a year home, working from home during COVID. And, you know, the new norm is starting to set in where a lot of people just want to work for themselves. They don't want to go back to an office and work for an employee and, pl and punch a clock in. Who can blame them? I'm one of them. So let's jump right into it. So, again, a quick introduction. My name is Drea. Hey, I'm with Platinum Black Services. I have been running this company for the past, I want to say 15, 20 years. Start off doing bookkeeping for uh, various clients in various industries. And then I wanted to kind of help out people on a, a more larger scale in starting a business. That's my passion. That's what I like to do, including I've owned a couple of other businesses in the past. And again, my mission is to help you you start a business quickly and find profitable income streams because that's what it's about. You want to support yourself. You want to be happy and you want to get your, your time back. All right. So my goal today is to help you do three things. And that is to help you name your corporation appropriately according to the state regulations. Each state has its own rules and requirements to follow to learn where to go online in order to see if your business name is available to use within your state. And last, how you know to do a business name search within your state. Now, as we go on, I first want to stop and uh, do a pause and go over some kill, you know, kill some myths about starting a corporation because I'm pretty sure a lot of you have weighed the options of starting an LLC versus a corporation. And either one, to be honest, is a great to do. My only thing is, is an LLC is basically considered um, a disregarded entity in the eyes of the federal government. It's not a bad thing, but there are just some tax advantages and things that you don't get to have as an LLC versus a corporation, unless you started an LLC and claimed to be a corporation or to be treated and taxed as a corporation, which I don't know, to me, it sounds kind of silly. You might as well just go ahead and be a corporation. That's just my personal opinion. But again, there's no right or wrong reason. And it still works out in the end, depending on you know what you do and what you choose. So the first myth killer is you don't need, you know, you might think you need a lot of money, but you don't need a lot of money to start a cor corporation. Not at all. The key thing, though, to starting a corporation is you just got to be very organized, especially from the beginning. So you're going to have corporate documents like um, article articles of incorporation, your bylaws and shareholders agreements, things like that. You want to just be very, very organized organized with those. Those are so important uh, for tax season, you know, tax time. And, um, you know, hopefully you're not audited, but in case you are, you want to have those forms on hand and in, in, in order. Your books, you know, your bookkeeping, your financial statements. My suggestion, I strongly recommend soon as you open up a business checking account or savings account or both, also run to your store or go online on Amazon and buy QuickBooks because the first dollar that you deposit into your bank is needs it needs to be recorded and then going forward it needs to be maintained. You have to track every single dollar that goes in and out of your business and you don't want to wait until the last minute to kind of scramble around and get things in order, but it's it's just essential to make sure that you have everything in order and and then of course collect all your statements and keep those filed away. Uh, the goal is, or the uh, requirement is to keep things on file for seven years, at least seven years, and then receipts. And of course, that's where your tax deduc deductions come in. You want to make sure that you're saving a, rec your, a receipt for any and every expense business related, and that qualifies uh, as a tax deduction for your business. The next myth killer is you are not required to pay dividends. Um, I think a lot of people decide to go the LLC route is because if I go the corporation route, oh, I'll be taxed 
twice. And that's not true because corporations, yes, they do pay dividends, but they're not required to pay dividends. That's just an incentive, which is used to kind of keep shareholders investing, pouring capital into the company, keeping it going. And um, by, by that time, if you're looking to pay dividends, by then you should have a really good CPA or CPA firm that's helping you through that process and knowing, you know, how to be taxed and, and how to, you know, get some benefits and, and kind of save you on that. And then the last myth killer is, um, you know, oh, you have to be this, you know, you, you shouldn't start a corporation unless you're, you know, at the level of a Fortune 500 company. Again, that's not true. Every Fortune 500 company is doing the exact same thing that you're doing when you're starting your corporation. Um, don't let that intimidate you because you, you don't have to be a big name, a big brand right off, you know, from jump. Even the founder of Apple started in his garage. So you don't have to, you know, be on the same level as the big boys. You you just need to start. And, you know, the only difference is that they've been a corporation a lot longer. That's only, that's, you know, that's it. Okay, so general naming requirements for corporations. And this is just general across the board for any state in the United States. And that is you cannot use words that may mislead the public into thinking that the company that you're forming uh, is formed other than for the purpose or the purpose listed or stated on your articles of incorporation. And there's about four rules to go over that goes into more detail about that. But just in general, you cannot start a business and list on your articles of incorporation that, hey, my business is like a professional commercial cleaning services. And then the next day you want to start a restaurant and use the same name. Mm, nope, that's not going to fly. That's not That's not going to work. All right, so the first rule in naming your corporation, you cannot imply that your corporation is, is a government entity, financial institution, or any other agency regulated by law within without organiz, uh, authorization, I'm sorry. So there are restrict, restricted words in general that you cannot use, such as bank, savings. You cannot say that your corporation is a trust or insurance company, a credit union, cooperative, et cetera. You just have to you know, go and... Um, check the, read the forms for filing out a business for your articles of incorporation, and it'll give you a list of names that are restricted. But this is pretty much the general rule. Unless you are authorized and given permission to claim that your business is, are one of these things, you cannot use that and you will be denied. Your application will be denied. All right. Rule number two, you cannot imply that your business offers professional services, which requires appropriate licensing by the state. So Restricted words like CPA, engineer, attorney, things like that. You cannot say that you offer professional services as a certified public accountant, engineer, attorney, you know, so on and so forth, if you are not licensed. Point blank period. You cannot do that. That's illegal. And third rule, and we're going to uh, expand the third rule a little bit more, um, which is you must use words that are distinguishable and not the same as or deceptively similar from another business name. Okay, so basically there are just rules in place that say, if someone has this name already registered, you cannot register under that same name or something similar or close to it, which will again confuse the public into thinking that you are a different company or something of that nature where it confuses the public and they don't know who is who. And the state as well. All right, so... Good example. You cannot use punctuation, con contractions, or abbreviations. They do not distinguish one name from another. And we're going to go through six quick examples. As you can see, number one, example number one, night and day is not distinguishable from night and the symbol day. It's just not. Number two, Hill Supermarket is not dis distinguishable from Hills with apostrophe S supermarket. Still very, very similar, very close. Um, number three, play, you know, kind of like an abbreviation, uh, P dot L dot A dot Y ink is not distinguishable from just saying the word play ink. Number four, barnstormers is not distinguished distinguishable, excuse me, from barn stormers with barn dash stormers. Same thing. The state will not approve that name for you. 
Number five, do not stop ink. Is not distinguishable from don't stop ink. Again, we're now we're using that contraction from do not to don't. They're not going to accept it. It looks too similar. And last, Mr. Coffee, where you're spelling Mr. M I S T E R L L C, it's not distinguishable from Mr. If you use the abbreviation or the prefix Mr. M R uh, period Coffee. Again, it's too similar. They're not going to allow that and um, let you form a corporation under that name. Okay, another example is uh, the use of an article such as the, a, or an, or such as an, but, or, or, <laughs> does not distinguish the name from another, nor does changing the entity's designation. So the first one, the first example, the big company is not distinguishable if you want to use a big company. See, you cannot interchange the with a, it's not acceptable. And then as far as the entity's designation, and we'll go into that a little bit more, um, where it says Barnstormers LTD, which is an abbreviation for limited, is not distinguishable from the Barnstormer, or I'm sorry, Barnstormers uh, company or CO dot, which is an abbreviation for company. They will not um, allow you to register under that. All right. So what can be used to distinguish the name? So numbers. So uh, numbers within a name can be used to distinguish one name from another if the number is formatted differently in each name, along with adding more letters. So following example, number one, Roman investments, two, which is, of course, the Roman numeral, you know, II or, you know, two, is distinguishable from if you use Roman investments and then the number two and investments two, if you spell out the word two. So they look at that as, you know, different enough, distinguishable enough to say, okay, we can have two or more companies register, uh, be registered in the state with that being the differentiator. And then number two, a plumbing is differ, uh, distinguishable between AA plumbing. So you just add another letter. Um, again, another example with the third um, example, I'm sorry, third example, is ABC is distingu distinguishable from AABC, ABBC, ABCC, ABCD, and AABBCC. They're all distinguishable from one another, and the state will allow you to register under those names. And also reversing words or using a variation of the spelling can also be used to distinguish one uh, one name from another. So first example, energy first, you flip those words or reverse or flip those words around, it will be distinguishable from first energy. And then if you kind of do a variation of spelling again, uh, quickie, you know, Q-U-I-C-K-I-E, Mart is distinguishable from a different way of spelling quickie. So you just um, remove the Q-U and you add Q-W-I-K-E-E -E mark, quickie mark, or a different another way of, spe of spelling quickie mark, and that is acceptable. All right, rule number, oh, still we're still on <laughs> rule number three. And uh, just to you know, wrap that up, a foreign language, if you use a foreign language name, um, it will that will not conflict with the English translation. It usually uh, does not. For example, le fleur, meaning the flower when translated into English. That's fine. So you have one language that says the floor it, as le fleur, and it will it can be registered and acceptable within the state because it's not the exact same word or spelling as the flower. And then just bottom line, at the end of the day, unacceptable words across all states will not be accepted and allow you to register your company. So if any name contains profanity or words or phrases that are generally considered a slur against an ethnic group, religion, gender, or hereditary, it is considered unacceptable right out the gate. Rule number four in naming your corporation, the name must always include an expressly authorized Suffix, often referred to as an entity's designator or an entity's indicator. So for the state of Utah, if you are looking to form a corporation there, you will be able to use one of the long suffix or abbreviations listed below, just one of them, such as Corporation Incorporated or Company, for short, Corp, Inc, or Co. 
Next, we're gonna move on to the fun part and switch screens within a few seconds. I'll show you the website to search for business name availability, which is the Utah Secretary of State's website. There, I will show you how to do a business name search to see if the name is available or not. All right, here's the fun part. I went online and I pulled up e-secretaryofstate.com. This is a great website because it provides quick links for the Secretary of State by state, forms to file the articles of incorporation, and then what we're about to do here is do a business name search, okay? So let's scroll down to find Utah. Here we go, Utah. So let's click on entity search. All right. And as you can see, I, I started the example in the box. I typed in Bob Ann. And this is a great example to use because I did a business name search for every single state. And it appears that every single state has a company with the name Bob in it. All right. So let's click search. And here we go with the search results. So if you look under name, you want to go through the entire list. And if there are a couple of additional pages to review, make sure you go through those pages as well. But go through the entire list to see if there is a company registered that uh, with a name that matches exactly to what you're looking for or looking to use or very close or similar. Because of course, you want to make sure that your business name is available. So again, go through that list. And then the second column, look under status to see if that company has expired, is active, is delinquent, so on and so forth. Because of, again, if it's active and if that business name is an exact match or very close to the name that you would like to use, then it's unavailable, unfortunately. All right, so let's go back to the previous tab. Now, let's say that your business name is available. Now you have two options here. You can either take option one and reserve the name, which places a temporary hold on the name. No one else can use it. It's, it's on hold for you. And it's an, on hold between 90 and 120 days, roughly, give or take, depending on the state's rules. And it'll be stated in the application for how long that term is. And again, it's a temporary hold until you're ready to file your articles of incorporation. Now, option two would be to bypass reserving the name and to actually file the articles of incorporation and form your business. OK, so let's go on to that step. So back to Utah and we're going to click on forms. All right. Now, there are two types of corporations you can form. So I want to break that down before we go on to the next step. There is a domestic corporation and also what's known as a foreign corporation. And I'll break that down. So a domestic corporation means that you have a primary residence or location um, office address within the state of Utah. So therefore you are considered a domestic corporation. Now, a foreign corporation means that you've originally established the business outside of the state of Utah, maybe in California, New, New Jersey, or Georgia, but now you want to establish a presence and have an address and location within Utah to legally conduct business or transact business within the state. Okay, so that is considered a foreign corporation. All right. So you got to know the difference so you'll know which application to complete. All right. Now let's go back to the option of reserving the name. But but we also have to go through the decision or make the decision of you being a domestic or foreign corporation. You have to make sure you know which one to submit the right application. OK, so let's say that you are a domestic corporation. So we're going to select under corporation on this list, domestic Utah profit. OK, and we're going to swing over to this list forms, scroll down under guide sheets and then again, miscellaneous information and websites and the option to reserve the name as a domestic corporation. You want to select business name information. OK, now here you want to select the link application for reservation of business name. And as you can see, it will place a temporary hold for that name for 120 days right there. All right. So you'll click on that link, fill out the application, attach the fee. There's always a fee. Send it to the secretary of state. They'll process it. And then your name will be on hold temporarily. OK, now let's go back. Click the back button. Now, again, let's say you want to file the articles of incorporation as a domestic corporation. So we're going to scroll back up and here's the link you want to select articles of incorporation. And here's the application. So you want to print that out or fill it out first, print it off, submit the fee, send it to the secretary of state of Utah. They'll process it and your, your business will be registered and you'll be good to go. All right. So let me go ahead and close out of that. We're going to go back. 
Now, again, the other option, a foreign corporation, if you fit, if you fall under that category, you're going to choose this option right here. So select foreign outside of the state, Utah profit. All right. And then again, to reserve the name, go back under miscellaneous information and websites, select business name for information. And then again, application for reservation of business name and fill out that application, submit it to the secretary of state. And then again, they'll place a temporary hold for 120 days of that name until you are ready to file the articles of incorporation as a foreign corporation. All right. And let's go back. Now, you don't want to reserve the name. You actually want to file the articles. So let's scroll back up. And now you want to select application for authority to conduct affairs. All right. So click on that link and here's the application. So you'll fill it out, print it off, attach the fee, submit it to the secretary of state of Utah. They'll register your business and then you can legally transact business as a foreign corporation within that state. So you'll be good to go. All right, guys, I want to thank you for your time. I'm glad that I was able to help you. So by the end of this video, you should now know the requirements of name your corporation by state. You should also know where to find the website, the secretary of website for your state in order to do a business name search and also how to do the name search. And the next step would be to also either reserve the name or to go ahead and file the articles of incorporation. In closing, I just want to um, suggest, you know, check Checking out my website. If you go to platinumblackservices.com, I greatly appreciate it. I have some more tools and tips to provide for you. If you scroll down, I have some free stuff. Check out the free stuff. Um, items such as seven things you need to maintain your corporate veil protection uh, is a free webinar. Another free webinar, nine legal corporate documents every corporation must have on hand. Also, a quick and dirty guide to uh, corporation filing requirements is a free ebook. And last, a fill in the blank business plan guide. If you don't have a business plan already, um, it's good to go ahead and grab that as you're forming your corporation with the state, filing the forms and getting established. All of this is free. Now, next, I also want to let you know that I have two kits that are all inclusive and it will help you uh, meet specific goals in your journey as you're establishing your, um, incorp your corporation within the state that you choose. And the first one is the uh, ki uh, quick business kickoff, the Incorporated Starter Kit. And it's just a couple of files for $10. You get uh, some really good checklists and files and forms to fill out that will help you cross all your T's and dot all your I's in the beginning stages of forming your corporation. If you need more information, more in-depth starter kit that also provides your articles of incorporation, your corporate bylaws, shareholders agreements, shareholder certificate, dissolution forms. I have a really great comprehensive package. It's, it's professional. The forms are in Word and PDF, so you can immediately download them, customize them, add your logo, and use them as needed and fill in the information that is customized to your situation. Down here, it's the corporate formation starter kit uh, uh, for the state of, and you just select whatever state that you're in. Right now, I have a special offer. It's if you use the code uh, start now, you'll get $60 off. Currently, um, a kit is $99. You receive over 150 forms. Again, they're all downloadable and easy and quick to use. But right now, with $60 off, the I'm um, giving you a discount of $39. And um, you can get started right away. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned what you needed to learn or what needed to know in order to um, do a business name search for your corporation and also how to reserve the name or to go ahead and file the articles of incorporation, depending on if you are a domestic corporation or foreign corporation. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.